God calls us to be separate. Separate is hard, but hard is good, and that God is best. And, um, and we put a lot of value on what's hard, because God shows up when it's hard. This is an NBC News special report. And we're coming on the air to bring you the latest on Hurricane Michael, now bearing down on the Florida panhandle. It is now a Category 4 storm, although moving close to 5, the most powerful storm on record ever to hit this part of the Gulf Coast. Um, my husband, my three children, our dog, and three cats were actually piled into uh, the closet in our master um, bathroom. Um, unfortunately, uh, that side of the house faced the north side, and so it was actually the first part of the house to fall in. So while we're sitting in the closet praying, um, water starts coming into the closet where we're, you know, we're hunkered down in. So it was actually very scary. Um, a very scary time for our family. And uh, as the hurricane was approaching, you could just uh, hear the toilet rattling. You could hear uh, the glass blocks in the bathroom uh, starting to crack. Uh, you could hear noises in the garage. You could hear the roof uh, just really squeaking and wanting to separate uh, from the house. And uh, it was that point that uh, you know, I apologized to my kids and, you know, I told them that, uh, you know, I, I let the decision of whether to stay or go be a family decision and I never should have made that a family decision. That's something that I should have taken ownership of and I should have gotten my family out of here. We, uh, uh, quite frankly, didn't think that we were going to make it through. When the hurricane happened, I was in the hallway at Covenant Christian School. Um, there was about 76 of us, kids babies, pets, um, and it was, it was chaotic. The noise was horrendous. Um, we knew something was happening above our heads. Um, just, you could hear the roof being torn apart. You could hear dust being blown around. Um, so you knew there was something devastating going on to the building up top. As it progressed and as things got worse around the building, we all kind of <laughs> moved together until all 70, I think 72 of us were crammed in just the middle of the hallway. Um, you know, no power, a window had, had busted, water was starting to come through the ceiling. Um, it, it was pretty, it was pretty um, terrifying, but um, yeah, we spent, you know, we spent it here. Robin, good morning. One word for Hurricane Michael, historic. This was a Category 4 hurricane, and keep in mind it was just shy of a Category 5 when it made landfall. Winds of 155 miles per hour, and the scope of the devastation now with the sun coming up here this morning uh, is really staggering. Panama City Beach dry dock boat storage. Wow. Devastated. Our gym looked like a hand had just pushed it in and smashed it. Um, every pine tree visible was snapped in half. And really at that point, even when you see that just outside these doors, did you really understand what was happening down the street or at our homes? It was very surreal and you were numb through the whole process. Um, and it was very difficult to take in. To walk out and look around uh, your, your church and your school, the community that you love, the fabric of your life, and uh, you're walking through a foot of water, the, the, the trees are gone, uh, the building is soaked, the, the gym is opened up and, uh, and, and flooded. Uh, you can't drive more than uh, a quarter mile before the roads are blocked. Uh, it, it was staggering. I've been here since I was, just after I was born, I've been through quite a few hurricanes and there was nothing like this. I've never seen anything this bad during the storm or as devastating afterward. The school protected us from something that has changed our life forever. And definitely in a good way. 
There have been some amazing things that have come out through this process. When I came back to the school after the hurricane for the first time, it was just unbelievable. Um, I've been through hurricanes before. I'm from Florida, so I've been through many hurricanes, but I couldn't believe the widespread damage, just how much the entire area was affected. It, it was tough. I mean, just to see everything all over the place and then to see the damage at the school, I just, I just prayed that somehow God was going to bring us through it because I knew that we had a lot of work ahead of us. Um, we came back and it was shocking. Um, people needed food, they needed water, there were long lines. Um, I was going back and forth between a house an hour away and here, um, sending food when I could with my husband and, and bringing food when I could for people, um, trying to help neighbors out. Um, it was a struggle for a good amount of time. And you think you're strong enough, but then eventually it gets to you. I'm sorry. It was devastating to see the gym completely closed in on itself. <sighs> to go up into my classroom <clears throat> and see that the ceiling had fallen in over my desk. <clears throat> um, the ceiling had fallen in over my desk. It had fallen in over all of my students. They had just made these beautiful Viking lap books and they were totally destroyed. Uh, they were all wa everything was waterlogged. The windows were broken. Um, it was just, it was horrible just to see um, the beauty that had been created so far, to see it completely destroyed by the storm. Well, we weren't prepared for the reality of uh, the physical destruction uh, that we saw in Panama City, and particularly with regard to the school, because by that point we were five or six weeks into the school year, uh, but that was long enough for the school to really become part of uh, our hearts and part of what we uh, most identify with uh, as part of this community. Uh, and to see it in the situation that it was in after the storm really broke our hearts, but uh, it felt like a matter of moments that it took for the school to begin to rally together. Uh, as a matter of fact, I, I still recall the day that we drove up and the first person I saw was Michael Sabo in the parking lot. And he was well on his way to formulating a plan for recovery. Yeah, it was pretty devastating to see the school after the storm. Uh, it was a big shock. Quite concerned on if the school was even going to be opened up at all, much less in the few weeks that it took. That was pretty amazing. When I came here and as I pulled up, the first thing I saw was the gym and just the magnitude of uh, destruction. Uh, I had to uh, stay in my car a moment and, you know, I was, uh, had a personal moment where I was uh, crying in the car and just asked God for for his wisdom and his strength. And at that point, I got out of the car and I came in. Quite frankly, I was in shock. Um, I had a lot of damage at my home, but this, this, was, this was on a much greater scale. And uh, it was a bit overwhelming. And uh, Mr. Sabo looked at me and he said, I want to be the first school to open. I want to open before the public school system opens. I want to open before the other private schools open. We need to send a message to our families that God is in control and we can do this. Uh, we, needed to, we needed to stand up. We, needed to, we had to get busy. It, it was a time uh, for leaders to lead. From day one, the leadership was not beaten down. And that was incredible to see people, we're gonna get through this and we'll figure out a way and how quickly Mr. Sabo was encouraging his staff and his, and in the church, the pastor, how quickly he was. You know, we met that Sunday, we met four days after for church in the yard. We did what we could and we had church. 
I didn't know how it would work, but I knew the people involved and I knew that we would get back. We'd get back. It was gonna happen, so. Yeah, all the faculty was ready just to jump in. So I had teachers calling me from other places saying, how, when do I need to be back at work? You know, and this was two days after the storm. So we were all ready to jump back in and just do whatever needed to be done to pull this back together. We had the plan to get uh, our families back on for just what we called them our house meetings. Our hope was to be able to see our kids, to be able to see our families, uh, to get our staff together and to tell them it's going to be all right. We're going to get through this. We're going to we're going to put things back together and, and we're going to be better for it. God's going to strengthen us in this time. He's going to provide. And we weren't exactly sure how that was going to happen, but we had complete confidence that 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 we were going to continue. The covenant was going to continue through this. And we set the date, the target date on November 1st for opening opening school back full time. Parents need to get back to work. And in order for parents to get back to work, you have to have a plan for the kids. And we knew that this was not a perfect plan. We knew that uh, our spaces were gonna be tight, uh, to say the least. We knew that um, teachers were gonna have to make sacrifices. We knew that parents, students were gonna have to make sacrifices and uh, comfort uh, was the secondary. You know, I, and I told our staff this, and um, uh, when, I, when I say certain things at times and I see the look on their faces, and, and I can get an idea of what they're thinking, and uh, they think I'm crazy. They think there's no way, there's no way you're, we're gonna get this done. And when I told them our plan, I told them this is our plan. We're gonna put temporary walls up, uh, we're going to have five classes in our fellowship hall. Uh, we're going to use partitions in our sanctuary. And we're going to utilize our, the modular units that we basically use for storage. Uh, but I want, another thing that I told them this, and I said, and this is what we're going to do. This is how it's going to work. And you're going to miss this. You're going to miss this time. You're going to miss this season. Because there are going to be things that we go through, and there's going to be things that we have to face that you're gonna long for one day. And one of those things is the community and the closeness that has developed among our, our staff and our teachers and our families and even our students uh, through this time. It was about three weeks right after the storm and I remember they said, we're gonna be in the fellowship hall. And when they said we, I didn't really ask any questions. I figured maybe a class or two. And then we found out, okay, first, second, third, fourth, and fifth grade are all going to be in the fellowship hall. And I was like, wow, how is that going to work, you know? But honestly, I think it's brought all of us as a staff so much closer together. Um, and I think the kids actually have a real appreciation for what it means to kind of have to tough it out a little bit, you know? And I, I don't think that's a bad thing. I think that's a great lesson to learn. And so we've all just gotten really close and had to lean on God and lean on each other. And it's been a really, really good experience, to be honest. Well, the, the open area classrooms have definitely been a challenge, but there's been some blessings in there too. Um, just the camaraderie that we've developed, you know, with, as far as all the teachers go, um, it's been nice because a lot of us are struggling right now after, you know, going through all of this. and having damage to our homes. Um, it's been nice to have each other around. Um, it's kind of helped us all grow closer, but it hasn't been without its challenges. It's noisy at times, um, but the children have really done well through it. I think they've really learned to focus well, and um, I think they're gonna be stronger for it. The way the people came together and worked as a family to try to comfort each other and just talk to each other and help each other through this very difficult time, um, I think I grew closer. I made some uh, better relationships, deeper, more meaningful relationships with my coworkers. And it's, it's been a, a very trying experience, but a learning experience as well, a growing experience as well. And it was actually a good feeling to come back here and to know that we were gonna rebuild and just all come together and rally around each other, which everyone did and still continues to do every day. The students have been 
just resilient, just resilient to the classroom environment, the structure that we have, that we're using, the sanctuary for particularly our son, our kindergarten class. It's not ideal, but it's definitely what they need and what they're getting and his teachers, his teachers have gone above and beyond to make sure that they're comfortable. And I don't think the children mind at all. I think they, they actually have thrived and has really taught us adults how to, how exactly how resilient they are and, and how this school has just been, been amazing in the, in the rebuilding of our hearts and, and of course our child's education. I, I remember Mr. Sabo calling us a couple of days after the storm and checking on us and, and we, we knew this was the right place to be and, and, and everything was going to be okay. You know, as you can tell and um, behind me, you, God basically, you know, allowed us to tear down all the walls and start over. So we're able to redesign classrooms, we're able to put closets in, um, redo flooring, and just expand. It was a good opportunity to, um, I know, I guess just embrace maybe the direction that God's going with the school. Like We just feel like it's a blessing that He has provided us through kind of the devastation. Classical education is going back to the way things were long ago. So it's a, a restoring of a method of education. It's a reviving of a method of education. It's, it's, re, it's a rebuilding of a method of education that we believe in. And so when we say uh, that lions, our mascot, that lions build, we're talking about some big things. Uh, but now, since the hurricane, when we think about building, it takes on a very practical meaning to our community today. Many of our students, many of our staff are, are working on rebuilding physical homes. They're re rebuilding uh, and putting their homes and their businesses back together. They are getting a chance to see firsthand what it's going to take to rebuild a school. And so our goal and our hope in this process of seeing the physical aspects of rebuilding a city and rebuilding a community are going to help us learn the lessons of what it takes to be rebuilders of a culture.